Hey, this is Dr. Fraser Horn. And I'm Professor John Nolan. So where are we at, John? We're at the Nutrition Research Centre Ireland. This is the West Campus at the Southeast Technological University in Ireland. So this is the home of the Macular Pigment Research Group and mm -hmm. this is the home of where people come here to study the role of mm -hmm. nutrition and chronic yeah. nutrition for human health and function. You say that, that you're studying the role of. So mm -hmm. give me kind of a, a 30,000 foot um, I don't know how much that is in meters, but uh, a view of like, what are some of the areas that you do research in here? Okay, great. Um, so we started off, I suppose, our initial work was studying diseases like macular degeneration and, and sure. essentially looking at risk factors for that condition. And at the early stages, it was like trying to map out were there any nutritional profiles or particularly yeah. carotenoids where they related. Yeah. Um, and in order to do a study like that, you need to have kind of like multidisciplinary approach. So we have people that can measure carotenoids in blood. So these sure. are conducted in, in analytical chemistry laboratories. Right. We then, if these carotenoids are good quality, good um, bioavailability, and they go into our target tissues, we want to test if they impact on function. And we, right. we're interested in visual function mm -hmm. and cognitive function. So we have a whole suite of testing facilities in here that That's we great. can basically, we run human clinical trials yeah. where we um, have research questions related to lifestyle and nutritional intervention. Right, that's wonderful. So you're, you're looking at supplements. You bring this up quite a bit. Why do we need supplements? We need supplements with carotenoids because we're not getting enough carotenoids from the foods that we eat. Mm -hmm. and. The way I like to put it is we we have known for a long time that good foods are good for us and there's yeah. there's multiple reasons why good foods are good for us, protein, fiber, etc. But there's I'm interested in micronutrients within right. good foods. So essentially it's what's good in good foods that can help the cells be healthy in the body. And can we identify those, extract those and use them? And the answer is we can and we have. Gotcha. Now have you found in your research that are all supplements the same, whether it's availability, bioavailability, or are there differences between different supplements? Oh, there's massive differences. Okay. Uh, the, the variation across supplements is remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not all the same. And, you know, I suppose Air Science has shown and, and validated that when you use, for example, with the eye carotenoids, yeah. when you have lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin, mm -hmm. these are three of the eye carotenoids. Right. When you have the combination of those, the results in terms of how a patient responds, the amount at which they respond, and the effect that has on their function is significantly different to, say, for example, a product that just has lutein or a product that just has zeaxanthin. Right. So there's three parts of this pigment jigsaw, right. and we've identified that, and we can source it now from marigolds, yeah. Mexican marigolds, and we can yeah. use it, so that's exciting. So you get marigolds from Mexico that eventually make their way around the world. They make their way around the world, yeah. and you know, one of the questions you asked was about, are they different? They're different in terms of efficacy, but right. also in quality. Gotcha. Um, and one of the things I'd say to, you know, patients, consumers, eye doctors is, you know, understand that there's a massive science behind even how it's formulated. So right. you need to be looking for formulations that are supplement certified, that have a quality stability program that validates that um, the active micronutrients are actually right. even present. Right. We see about 70% of supplements fail in that. And so one of the great things that they've done here is also shown the contrast sensitivity function, how it's improved with mm -hmm. those supplements. And we know contrast is huge for sport and performance. Uh, that's really quality of vision, not necessarily quantity of vision. So, um, you know, I, I think it's really changed what we do in the exam room when we make recommendations for our athletes to try to help them while they're out on the field, pitch, whatever they're playing. Absolutely. And I think the measurement of contrast sensitivity is, is key regardless of even disease status. Right. So, if so, for example, if you take a patient with macular degeneration, the first visual function measure that's going to drop is their contrast sensitivity. Right. You're just not measuring it in the clinic. Yeah. That's why they become really unhappy really quickly. Right. Scale it in the opposite direction. You look at your really healthy patient that's top of their game, that sure. wants to perform at the highest level in terms of sports, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, subtle differences in nutritional intervention can have a massive effect on contrast sensitivity, which has a real gain, a real right. win for them um, right. in, in how they perform. Yeah. And it's these small differences that oh, make the big huge. difference in, when, when, we, when we work at sports, for example. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you for telling us a little bit about the research that you do here and uh, yeah, keep up the great work. Pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.